Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Are we all happy in the house? Amen. 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 Come on, turn to your neighbor and tell them that Jesus loves them. Come on, turn, 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 turn and give them a smile. Please do so, do so, do so. And the more you do that, the more you are actually adding, you know, you're bringing that deliverance, that joy, that peace in their lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. As our convener, Sister Raquel, the highly favored of the Lord, that's what I know. She has just um, led us into that. Um, we are just going to call our first speaker, even though we've kind of like swapped. We've kind of like swapped. But now before we actually call our next speaker, there are a few things that I just want us to know a little bit of our first speaker. Right. And then we will go on. But before I actually introduce our first speaker, give me um, some few five minutes just to speak a little bit more of our speaker. Our speaker, he is, she is Pastor Patricia. Come on, Pastor Patricia Morrison. And Pastor Patricia Morrison is my mom my mother in the Lord and to be honest to see her being here with us today it is the grace and the you know and the message of the Lord we have come so far for me to be a mom where I am she has a lot of input she took me from the age of I should say probably 21 somewhere there and I was actually living in a house and she brought me up and here we are together. God rich and rich and bless you for saying yes to this call and we just want to say thank you once again. And I will just say two more in my room, maybe let me say five minutes uh, talk about our dear pastor. Okay, just an announcement. There's a car, WF58BZR Ford car, needs to be moved, please. WF58BZR, if we can just help and move it a little bit. So, Pastor Patricia Morrison is a co founder of World Life Center, World Life International Church and has, a, has pastored, pastored alongside her husband, Pastor David Morrison, for 19 years. She is called to teach the Word of God and love empowering others to grow in their gifts and callings. Pastor Patricia is also a biblical teacher, delivering the Word using online and offline platforms and has trained in mentally and counseling people. Her career is in education, currently primary where she works in as a pastoral capacity. She has been married to senior pastor David Morrison for 28 years. Wow, 28 years and they have five children. And we have one in the house. Then she was my little baby looking after. <laughs> Hi, Jasmine. You're most welcome. She has, Pastor Patricia is also the author with her book, Psalm 91, ready for pre order, and Fishers of Men is on the way. Hallelujah. So that's who Pastor Patricia is. So Pastor Patricia will welcome you to the assignment and to the pulpit. Please take your time. Yes. Hallelujah. 
Greetings, ladies, brothers in Christ. It's so wonderful to be here today to share in your very first ladies' conference. What a blessing that is, amen? amen? That's a wonderful blessing, that's a wonderful blessing. And I'm so happy to be here to speak to you, to encourage you. I know that the Lord, this topic, it's a powerful topic, amen? amen. I trust you've been praying about it. I trust you didn't just say, oh yes, here's a topic and let's see where we go with this. But I pray that you've been praying about it, fasting about this meeting, that today something very, very special is going to be deposited into you. Amen? Amen, amen. amen, amen. I have to greet first our gracious host, Reverend Triumph. Yes, we go back a long way. God is amazing, amen? amen. He is amazing. Yes, that's fine. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. That's that's fine. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, um, as I said, we, we have come a long way. And so I'm so happy to be here today in your conference. I want to greet the apostle of this house, um, Reverend Aleto McCandleweir. We have known him for many, it's because of him why we got to know Reverend Triumph, amen? That's how it came, that's how it happened. And he also served in our home and in our house in the church, amen, for a few years. And we thank God for where he has brought us from and where we are at this point. To everyone that is here, be, I just greet you in the name of Jesus, amen? Very quickly, I want to just talk to you about a book that I have written called Psalm 91. <coughs> In the middle of COVID, the Lord gave me this book. He gave me the message of the book. Um, we were living in a time, and in a, a, I think it, there's been no other time in history like that time. A time where every single person in the world was facing the same thing. And this thing, you know, there was so much fear and it was like so much fear that it split people almost down the middle. Whether you were a family, whether you were a community, whether you worked in an office, there were those who said we're taking it, there were those that said we're not taking it. It just split people down the middle and people became so fearful, amen? But in that time I remembered that the Lord was saying to me, the blood of Jesus is enough. The blood of Jesus is enough. And so he, he put this book in me. And so this book will just encourage you. This book will strengthen you. This book will cause you to know what you have in your arsenal. We've heard a powerful testimony today. Amen. We've just heard. Have we? Did you hear it? Amen. That it doesn't matter what the enemy tries to do. If God and God does have a plan for your life, that plan is going to be fulfilled. Amen? And so I want to bless my daughter with this book. That she will enjoy it. Amen? They often say that at the back. Amen? And we're doing them reduced um, for the first 100 copies. So instead of 9 99 you can get it for £8. Amen? Today. So God bless you. My daughter's at the back, Jasmine. She will be selling them. All right, God bless you. Okay, so we want to go into this now, praise God. Now, I love this theme of um, a sphere of influence, women of influence. Every single one of you are a woman of influence. You may say, well, I don't have a platform. I don't have a pulpit. You don't need one. You are an influence to somebody somewhere in your life. People are watching you. And sometimes we don't realize that people are watching us, but they are watching us. They're watching the way you conduct yourself. They're listening to your words, amen? Even your children, they are listening to you and they are watching you. Sometimes they watch more than they listen, <laughs> yeah? They watch because they want to see if your walk is as your talk, amen? So sometimes they're watching to see what does mom do now, amen? But we all have a sphere of influence, and so we all want to walk in our sphere of influence. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. And I love this, let her go. 
Let her go. Let's look at John chapter 11. Let her go. This is so, um, it's a very well known scripture about Jesus and his friend Lazarus. A very, very well known scripture. And we know that um, verses 1 to 4, it talks about how Jesus and Lazarus and the um, Mary and Martha, they're a family, but they are very close friends with Jesus. All right? Can somebody read just verses one to four? Of John chapter 11, say John chapter 11. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 11 and verse 1 to 4. 1 chapter 11 and verse 1 to 4, and it reads A man named Lazarus mm -hmm. was sick. Yes. We live in Bethany with mm his -hmm. sisters Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Mm -hmm. Her brother Lazarus was sick. And so the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. Verse 4 and last. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. Amen. No, it happened for the glory of God, mm -hmm. so that the Son of God will, be, will receive glory from this. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Mary and Martha loved their brother Lazarus. You know, if you have sisters or brothers, you have grown up together from very young up until adulthood. Amen. You become very close. And these three were very, very close. But I tell you something, when someone is dead, it doesn't matter how much you love them. It doesn't matter how much you want them to be with you. It doesn't matter how much you're thinking to yourself. Oh, I remember we used to sit around the table. When they're dead, you're not going to put them around your table. When they are dead, you're not going to put them in your bed. When they are dead, you're not going to try and take them shopping with you. Why? Because they're dead. And when somebody is dead, you have to do what? Put them away. And so no matter how much they loved Lazarus, they had to put him away. Jesus, when he heard, he said, this sickness is not unto death. Why? Because Jesus knew what he was going to do. He knew that this sickness, although Lazarus was going to die, he had a plan in mind. Amen? Amen? He had a plan in mind. When you go to the graveyard, we've all been there. Amen? You go to the graveyard, you go there to do what? Put away your dead. When you go there, there's no shopping malls. When you go there, there's not even lights in the place. When you go there, there's no, nothing of entertainment. Why? Because the people that are there are they're dead. They are dead. And so because they're dead, there's nothing. You don't need no entertainment. You don't need no coffee place to sit in. You know, and people who, who are living, who keep going back to the graveyard, they keep going. Monday, they are there. They go back home. Tuesday, they are there. They come back home. Wednesday, they are there. They come back home. Thursday, they are there. They keep coming back to the graveyard. What did Jesus say? Why are you seeking the living among the dead? Why are you doing that? It is only people, you said it, Sister Raquel, who are out of their minds. Do you remember the man that was living in the tombs, cutting himself? It is people who are out of their minds that want to live with the dead. Because they don't know that although this person has died, I am still living. And as hard as it seems, life must go on. Amen. Amen. Amen? Life must go on. Have you seen people standing around the grave and they, they, they're like this, like they almost want to go in the grave. And people like they're holding them because, oh, oh, oh. But you know what? If you let them go and they drop them, go, oh, oh, oh. Why? <laughs> Why is it woo 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 now? First it was ah, 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 but now woo 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 because why I don't want to go down there. Dirt is covering me. It's dark down there. What is down there? Bugs and creepy things and nasty things. There's no light down there. So as much as my heart is breaking, 
I've got to put the dead away. Jesus said, I came that you would have life and have it more abundantly. So for every single one of us, he has brought us into life. Amen? He has brought us into life. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting ahead of myself. Your body, regardless how beautiful your body is, we pamper our bodies. And we should. Every now and again, of course, pamper yourself. But know that this is going to decay. The minute life has left it, the minute blood is, you know, if somebody has an accident or something and blood is gushing, the first thing they need to do is stop the flow. Because why? Life. The life is in the blood. And so if blood keeps going and it's not stopped, soon life will stop. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. In those days, in Jesus' time, if somebody died, they would be buried very quickly. You know, here now we have... Um, systems and injections and things we can do to put into the body and when we do that it sustains life in the body enough so the body doesn't totally decay and become something else so it will be held whether it's for i don't know up to four weeks people yeah sometimes even longer if they have people from overseas that are coming that body can be preserved all right but in Jesus' time, no. The body would be washed and then it would be anointed with expensive perfumes. Amen? Afterwards, the body would be wrapped in a shroud, a piece of cloth wrapped. Something would be covered over the head like a napkin. The hands and the feet would be tied with strips of cloth. It was common that families would share tombs. They would share them because what would happen is after they have put you in the tomb, a year later they will open up the tomb. They will take out those bones, your bones now, put them in a box and put that box at the back of the tomb. Ready, ready for the next person who's going to die and then they put them in the tomb. So there are lots of little boxes <laughs> all holding the bones of their ancestors in the tomb. So Lazarus' tomb would have been no different. Amen? So he's there in the tomb. But because it's just been four days, he'll just be there, wrapped up. Amen? Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. So, when Jesus gets there, he realizes Lazarus is dead. He had already known he was dead. He said to the disciples, he's dead. He said to them plainly, he is dead. Why? Because they, first he said he's sleeping. And so they were thinking, well, if he's sleeping, that's good. He's been sick, now he's sleeping, he's having a rest. He said, no, he's dead. But this, he said, I'm glad it's happened because why? God's glory is going to be revealed. Amen. amen? The glory of God. So no matter your situation, amen, even when people say it's dead, it's finished, it's hopeless, it never is over till God says it's over. It's never over. It doesn't matter what you face in life. It is not over until God says. It doesn't matter who the person is, how respectable they are. It doesn't matter what degrees they have. It doesn't matter where they are in society. It's what God says. But the very thing that we need to do is to keep our eyes on the word of God more than what people are saying, more than what people are doing, more than what people are, how they're performing. No, we've got to keep our eyes on the word of God. What does the word of God say to me? Do you remember in Ezekiel where God took the prophet down to the valley of dry bones? There's bones in the valley. There's bones heaped up everywhere. Head bones by leg bone, leg bone by ankle bone. Everything is a mess. It's all mixed up. And God is saying to the prophet in that situation, can these bones live? Amen. Now, if it was me asking the prophet, he'd say, no way. <laughs> no way. It's a mess. The Bible said the bones were very dry. There's not even sinews on these bones that you're going to think something could come. The Bible says they were very dry. But because it was God Almighty who was saying, can these bones live, Ezekiel? 
He said, oh Lord, you know. Amen. You know. Amen. Me, I don't know. But you, you who is the most high God, you who is the one who knows all things, Amen. you know. And so what happened? He said, I need you to speak to the bones. I need you to prophesy to the bones. No matter how dead your situation is, use the word of God. Use the word of God. The wonderful thing about it is, as he, it was like a progression. Because what happened, he started to prophesy. And then the Bible said, bone came to bone. Bone came to bone. And then they were just still lying there on the ground, all skeletons, just lying there. And then he began to prophesy some more. Then they stood up. And then he began to prophesy some more. Then what? Sinews, skins, organs. All, you, you tell me, you know, in heaven, let me just give you this. In heaven is everything you will ever need. So if you need a new womb, it's in heaven. If you need a new knee bone, it's in heaven. If you need a new hip, it's in heaven. Whatever you need, it's in heaven. So th there's bones in the valley. There was just bones. There's no organs, no nothing. But the organs came down. Amen. 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 By what? The word of God. Amen. The word of God. Amen. You've got to speak that word. Amen. The Bible says the word is living and active. Amen. It's living. It's alive. Amen. But if I don't say it, if I don't use it, it becomes what? A dead letter. The dead letter won't do anything. But I have to use the word of God. Amen. So as he began to prophesy and prophesy, the Bible said they stood up and what were they? A great army. Only the word of God can do that. When Jesus gets to the tomb, Martha is there crying. Mary comes now. She's crying. Everybody's crying. Because why? You have people that you will actually, if you can't even afford it, all right? There are people that will come and mourn. They'll, when you don't have strength, they'll hold their belly and cry. <laughs> they'll weep for you on your behalf. They'll do that as a job, <laughs> yeah? They'll do that as a job. And so people were weeping. People were crying alongside Mary and Martha. They were there. Lots of people knew them. They were well known, so lots of people are there. Jesus says, bring me where you've laid him. Now what I've realized about this, which is so wonderful, a great miracle took place, but Jesus allowed men to be involved in the miracle. And even today, Jesus allows us to be involved in miracles. He allows us. And somebody says, how did he allow you? What happened? He said to them, move the stone away. Without the stone being moved, if he called for Lazarus, how would he get out? Remember what I said to you. Sister Raquel, just come here for me. I've just explained to you how it goes. When you are in the tomb, okay? When you are in the tomb, your hands are bound together. You're in a shroud, okay? You're in a shroud, your hands are tied. Round and around we go. Your hands are tied. Okay? Your feet, they're tied. This is what happens in the tomb. And the thing is, no, there's no problem when you're in the tomb and you're dead and you're tied. You don't need to move your legs, do you? Can somebody just tie that off for me? You don't need to move your legs. <laughs> you don't need to, because why you're dead. <laughs> your face is covered. You don't need to see anything. You're dead. Amen? So God allowed, Jesus said, move the stone away. Lazarus is lying down in there. But with Lazarus are all of his ancestors. So somebody said, and I heard it before when they said, Jesus had to say, Lazarus, come forth. Because if he just said, come forth, all of the bones would start to rattle. All of the granddaddies and the grandmummies and everybody connected to Lazarus is coming forth. Can anybody say no to Jesus? 
Jesus? No. Is there any authority higher than Jesus? No. So we had to make this specific and say, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. Thank you. That's exactly how Lazarus came forth. Because why? He was wrapped up. Come back now, I think. <laughs> Imagine, we have just done this and this. But all, Lazarus has been dead how many days? Four days. That means all of Lazarus's bodily fluids are in all of these. Are you hearing me? Because when somebody dies, fluids leave their body. My sister died and she died at home. She died at midday, roughly about midday. And we didn't have anybody come for her till about 10 o'clock at night. And I did that for a reason, because I wanted to raise her back. Do you understand me? I didn't want confusion. I didn't want people to just come and rush things, because I really believed it wasn't her time. Amen? And so things happened to the body, even in that short space of time. Rigor mortis was setting in. Amen? So all of the bodily fluids and everything is in this shroud, is in these bandages, is covering the feet. So although life is there now, what does Jesus say? Let him go. Somebody had to take off the bandages. You see with us, we can be free, but somehow we're bound. We're free. Jesus said, I've come that you would have life and have it more abundantly, so we're free. But somehow we're bound. We come into God's house. He says, lift up your hands and worship him. You can, you're just, because why? There's a restriction because I'm still bound. I'm still tied. They say, come, you know, God has given us feet. We are short footed. It says how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that is bringing good news. But we can't bring good news because why? We're still tied up. We're still tangled up with our own situations, our own circumstances. And so we can't move as we ought to move. These things have a scent. Do you know death has a scent? It's like, mm, that don't smell right. You ever been somewhere and you smell something that don't smell right? And you're like, where's that smell come from? What's that? And if it's in your house or in your kitchen, you don't stop till you find out where that smell coming from. Amen? Is, that, is it only me who does that? <laughs> you don't stop until you find out where is that smell coming from because something don't smell right. When you have been dead for four days, all of those fluids are everywhere. Amen? Amen. So you're whole. Jesus has made you whole. But now, Jesus says to men, let him go. Amen. Men, let him go. How are you going to be let go? How will you be let go? It's going to take the word of God. Amen. Amen. It's going to take the word of God. Amen. The Bible says he has put in the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Why? Because you can't just come to church and be babies all your life. You can't come to church and be tied up all your life. You need somebody to say to you, this is where you need to be. This is how you need to conduct yourself. This is what you need to do. Amen? Amen. So Jesus himself has set the church in order and put people within the church to help you. And as they use the word of God, little by little, smelly bandages start to come off. Joyce Meyer talks about stinking thinking. Stinking thinking is any thinking that is not in line with the word of God. So somebody says, I can't do that. I'm only from this family. I can't do that. That's stinking thinking. Somebody says, oh, I can't. No, I, I can't go there. God is telling me to go there and to do this. But no, who am I? How can I do that? Stinking thinking. You need to see yourself as Christ sees you. Amen. Amen. You need to see yourself how Christ sees you. How does he see you? Think about it. How does Christ see you? Really think about that for a minute. How does he see you? He sees you just like him. 